I think we romanticize that stuff. Um, you know, I, I think that if you build this product the right way, which is, a, you know, that's a big if. It's, it's a hard one to get right. But if you do it the right way, it dramatically increases serendipity. It, it, it dramatically, uh, it, it makes life better. It, it, it makes people friendlier. It makes people smile more. It helps you remember people's names. It helps you see these hidden connections wherever you go. And, and the stories that we're hearing for people are just incredible. I mean, people write to us and say, and, and again, we're, we know there's so many things wrong with the product. There's so many things we need to build and fix, and it's so early stage. But people are writing to us and saying, thank you for building this. This is like, they, they have these crazy stories about these random connections that's surfacing everywhere they go. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, if you, can, if you can build something that understands the context well enough to just surface the right things to the right people at the right times, it just makes life better. Um, yeah. I, I mean, let me, let me give you an analogy. Like, we, you say there's this nice mystique in, in not knowing things about people, but sometimes it's, sometimes it's a matter of efficiency, right? Where, uh, you know, imagine if the web was like the real world. So what would LinkedIn look like? LinkedIn would be a collection of a whole bunch of profiles. Each profile would be a blank page with a photo and a message button. There'd be no name, there'd be no job title, you'd have no idea what industry this person was in, what their background was, what they've done. If you were looking for you know, a, an Android engineer or a small business tax accountant, you'd have to randomly message people and say, pardon me, is there any chance that you have this background? I mean, it's ridiculous. You can't even imagine what it would be like because it's so bad and broken. And that's the way the real world is. And so we can say there's, there's value in, in the mystery, but sometimes it's, you know, you just unlock such a tremendous amount of value when you can surface this extra context, this extra data layer in an ambient way. And, and we just know this is gonna exist. We know it will. I know that in however many years you're gonna be able to walk into a room and look around and just know all these things about people and we're gonna look back on it and say, I can't believe we didn't used to have that. How do we know who to talk to when we had a question about something? How do we know when our friends were next door? When we were in a foreign country, how do we know who, to, who spoke our language? Um, I can't believe we used to just walk around blind not knowing anything about anyone and I can't believe that was just 10 years ago. And, and you know, think about cell phones. We say that about them today. What did we do before we had the ability, ability to magically speak to anyone in the world, right? How did we coordinate and meet up with friends? How did we keep in touch with our family? Or, or what did we do without Google Maps or Wikipedia or the web itself? There are all these technologies that we've just grown accustomed to. And, and the reason that this stuff that we're doing in is just now becoming possible is because these, <clears throat> these four or five waves are just coming together at the same time. So that smartphones are just now becoming ubiquitous. Facebook and online identity systems are just now becoming ubiquitous. We can just now run mobile apps in the background. We, we can just now do push notifications. Battery life is just now at the point where it's good enough and it's only gonna get better. Location accuracy is just now at the point where it's good enough and it's only gonna get better. And, and for, you know, think, about, think about when the web came out. When the web came out, it was like this entirely new dimension. I mean, we, call, we literally called it cyberspace and the information superhighway. It was like this crazy new thing that allowed us to cut across space and time and, and we could all of a sudden message people on the other side of the world, which was crazy. And we could put up a web page, and our cousins in Europe could see it, which, which was just nuts. And we had to figure out what we wanted to do with this new publishing space, this new dimension. And, and you know, we really asked questions like, will this ever be used for commerce? And is it just weirdos who use the internet? And, and what's the etiquette in a chat room? And what are the privacy concerns here? And, and do we call this a web page or a net site? I mean, it was just this crazy new thing that we had to figure out. And right now, in the physical world, because of cell phones, we have this entirely new dimension opening up, this new publishing space where all of a sudden we can take information and just put it into the ether, put it into the air above our heads. And if people want to consume it, they can, but they don't have to. And all of a sudden, if I wanna learn about the person sitting over there, I don't have to walk up and bother them. I am no longer taking their time. It's no longer public. It's no longer synchronous. It's dramatically more efficient. And it, I mean, it, it reduces the friction involved in learning about the people around you by orders of magnitude. And, and I think people don't realize what a big deal this is. Yeah, the, the nature of serendipity sort of changes as you can surface these things more easily. It's a really interesting question. Like, um, you know, we have people That'll, I have people that'll show up on my highlight and they're these people who I've crossed paths with you know, 14 times and I've never met them, I don't know who they are. We have all these friends in common. We're, we're obviously hanging out in the same places, but 
but I never would have known that before. And, and, and that's sort of an interesting new thing. Or what happens if all of a sudden, you know, I run into 12 people a day who went to my high school? I mean, that, that probably becomes less novel and the bar probably gets raised. We don't know, right? Um, but, it, but I think it, you know, it, it goes back to this notion that there's so many connections out there that are just never surfaced. We just, we just can't see them, right? Like in, I'll give you an example. In our office, we have, we have three different companies who work there. They're all really great people. Um, but when you don't work in the same company as someone, you don't get to know them as well. And so a lot of times you sort of meet them on day one and, and introduce yourselves and forget each other's names two minutes later. And for the next, for the next couple of months, you walk by them in the hallway and sort of nod hello. And, you know, but, but you don't want to ask them their name again because you're supposed to know each other's names by then. And, and so you just sort of keep to yourselves. And um, all of a sudden, everyone started getting on highlight and it's completely changed the culture. People smile more. They talk more. I know everyone's name now and all these crazy connections have been surfaced. There's this one guy who sits near me who I never really spoke with before highlight, but he's this great guy. And it turns out that he was really good friends after college in Texas with this girl, Cheka, who grew up riding horses with my wife when she was 15 in San Diego. And it's like, wow, what are the odds of that? We never would have discovered that before. Or another guy messaged me and said, hey, how do you know Jamie so-and-so? And because he saw on highlight that I knew him. And I said, I met him at a tech conference a few years back. And and we kept in touch and he said he used to be my high school Spanish teacher. <laughs> and you know, we always say, what are the odds? Or we all have these crazy stories, right? One, um, one of my friends a little while ago said, Paul, this is really weird, but I think I saw your friend Josh from high school on a bridge in Prague two weeks ago. And I said, yeah, I think you did because he was there on vacation. And we always say, what are the odds? But I think if you did the math, if you ran the simulations, if you have something like Highlight, you realize the odds are actually pretty good. Far more often than you would expect, your friend is on the other side of that wall or driving by your office or that person over there knows 42 of your friends and went to your high school. I think that any time you have a technology that allows you to share in a way that we haven't been able to share before, you, get this, you see this common pattern, right? People look at it at first and most people will say, whoa, that's creepy, that's weird. I, uh, I don't know why I'd use that, that's, you know, that's weird. Um, and it's not because we're naturally opposed to sharing in this way, it's because we've never even had the option to do it before and so we've never even had to consider it. And, and so most people will have this knee-jerk reaction that says, oh, that's creepy. Um, but then a subset of people will look at it and they'll say, oh, that, that is kind of crazy, but that seems interesting. I'll try it out. And they try it out and they realize that it's actually really fun and rewarding. And, and there are all these interesting new flows of social capital and, and, and they have this really great time on it and they tell their friends about it. And over time, more and more people see them enjoying it and they decide that the social benefits of being part of this thing and sharing in this new way out outweigh the cost of that additional privacy that they're giving up. And that happened with Facebook, it happened with Foursquare, it happened with LinkedIn, it happened with Twitter, and it happened with the web itself. I mean, <clears throat> when the web came out, people thought only weirdos used the internet. Um, people, no one would felt comfortable putting a credit card on the internet, that was crazy. And, and um, <clears throat> so I think it's a very familiar pattern. But if you build this product the right way, and again, that's an if because there's so many details that you have to get right to nail the user experience and the social engineering and, and how do you build something that's fun but safe and trusted and built off real identity and mutual friends and something women can use and feel safe on and married people can use without seeming creepy and something where you're not getting bothered when you don't want to get bothered. And, you know, it's very hard to get right. But if you can get it right, I think that it makes the world so much better. I, and I think that it's a product that almost anyone in the world could find useful. I mean, even a, even a, you know, a mother with three kids who's married and has no interest in going to bars and meeting people would probably be willing to let her existing friends look at their phones when they're at a kid's birthday party with her and remember her husband's name and her kid's names and where she works. I mean, remembering people's names, remembering where you met people, seeing these hidden connections wherever you go, they're such universal things. Um, and, and I feel like it just creates more empathy. It unlocks all of this potential that we have to just connect with people more and to be friendlier. And, and you know, how many times have you seen this situation? You're on a plane, it's a six hour flight and there are two people sort of staring ahead for the first five hours and towards the end of the flight, one guy says, so what do you do for a living? And an hour later, they're best friends and they're exchanging cards and they have all these things in common. And I think that, I think there's this, this fundamental human desire to, to connect more, but we don't do it because it's risky. It's risky, we don't, you know, one example I might have said before is I think that, you know, if I'm sitting in a cafe and the woman sitting next to me happens to know my sister who lives in London, that's super cool, that'd be interesting to know. But there's no way I'm gonna go to this woman and say, 
pardon me, any chance you happen to know Phoebe Davison from London? I mean, that's ridiculous because the odds are so low. I don't know anything about her and I don't want to bother her. I don't want to get rejected. It's very public so everyone can see me getting rejected. It's synchronous so I'm taking her time and there are all these reasons why learning about the people around you and connecting with the people around you is weird and risky and scary and intimidating and filled with friction so we just don't do it. We, we sit with our headphones in and we stare awkwardly at our phones and we just accept the fact that we're going to live in a city full of strangers because that's a safer thing to do. Wow. Uh, um, and, and, and I feel like everyone in the world has something interesting about them, right? Everyone, everyone has something, something interesting to say, some, some cool aspect of their history. And if you can surface that in a lightweight way, it just creates more empathy. And, and uh, I, I really think it makes the world better.